All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, really nice to be here. Choosing a walk-up song is always a little bit difficult, whether it should be thematic with the talk is what I went with this time. Uh, but last time I went with Mrs. Robinson, which was a big hit when it landed on the Mrs. Robinson and everyone realized what song it was. Uh, yeah, I, so, but today I'll be talking about Funnel Join, which is a package that I've created along with Dave Robinson and Anthony Baker um, to do define a tidy grammar of funnels in R. So what do I mean by a funnel? A funnel is a set of events by users over time. So let's take a few examples. Let's say you're an e-commerce company redesigning your homepage and you want to understand the behavior and who are these users visiting this homepage. Some things you might want to know about them include what were the pages, the last page people saw before coming to this homepage? Or you might say and said, what happened afterward? What product pages did they see? If you're an e-commerce company, you care a lot about conversions, people actually buying. So what is that conversion rate? And what if you limit that to a two-day window? So these are all questions looking at users, in this case, visitors to your website, understanding their behavior, whether that's page views or conversions, and over a set of time. But it doesn't just have to be people. What are some other questions we can ask in this way of this kind of first this happened, then that? And we have an identifier for who did it, and what the event was in the time. Well, I solicited some uh, potential questions from people and I got some interesting answers. Like which salmon migrated to station one, then station three to station two? This is a question that ecology researchers might ask in understanding the migration patterns. What drugs did people take in the last month before starting another drug to make sure that you can capture any interactions? What was the last ad people clicked before they registered? Or what companies had their stocks hit 100 and then dropped to 40? So, right, these are companies, salmons, et cetera. It's not just people, and they all have in common this type of structure of the question. So let's take a specific example. Uh, when was each user's first landing and then their, first, their, then their registration, first registration afterward? So we have two fairly small, simple tables here, which just has landing, registration, and the user who did it, and the time. Now, currently, if I asked you to answer this question, your workflow might look something like this. You'd first have to filter to get the first landing per user. Then you need to left join with the other table registered on user ID. But remember, we only want those registrations that happen after the landing. So you've got to filter to make sure that the registration time's greater than landing, or in some cases, you want to keep those who don't have a registration. And finally, we need to filter for the first row of the registration because we only want their first registration afterwards. Now, this was a little, you know, this was a fair amount of code, it's probably something most of you could code up, but let's say then I switch up the question a bit. What about who registered for the first time ever after their first landing? So not, I don't want to keep people who had their second registration after they landed, I just need it to be their first ever. So now we've got to change it up a bit. We have to say, let's filter now for their uh, last landing, because I'm saying I only want their last landing and then first time ever registration. So we change up and add the descending. Then I need to join again with registered, but I need to only join on the first people's first ever registration. And finally, again, I do that filtering. So this is a place where a lot of errors can come in, right? You're copying and pasting some of the code, but you have to remember, oh, I got to change it to descending. Oh, I have to make sure I only get the first ever registration. And there's a lot of room for error here. And it's also can be a little difficult to think about it. It's not super easy to switch between these two types of funnels. And that's why we created the funnel join package. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. It's not yet on CRAN, um, but we've been developing it for about a year and a half, so it's pretty mature now. And this is meant to solve these types of issues. Let's take a look how it does that. Because the goal of this talk for you and funnels is maybe before now, this was you. This is Cinderblock, the cat who's trying to lose some weight, and as you can see, is not very enthusiastic about this prospect. So maybe with funnels, you're like, yeah, I guess I can do it. I really don't want to be here. But right after this talk, this is going to be you. You're going to start taking your first steps. You're like, I can do this. You know, this is all fine. And then finally, tomorrow, because I promise you funnel join really is that simple, you will just be going and leaping over <laughs> any problems that you encounter. So that is what I hope for you to all take away from this talk. Let's dive into funnel join. What is this magic package? Well, let's take that question we had. 
what was that first landing and the first registration afterward? So here is how funnel join addresses this question with the after join function. Let's break it down piece by piece. So first we start with the table one. Which of these tables is the first event? In this case, landed. Then we take table two, registered. We want to do a left join, so we could add it as an argument, but funnel join you can just write after underscore left underscore join, just like you could have right, inner, etc. Then we say, what are the user columns that we are joining? What's the unique identifier for, it could be people, again, company, salmon. What are the time column names? How do we know when these events are happening? And then finally, the type of after join. The first four arguments here probably look pretty familiar. Right, we're used to this when we're joining any tables, we have to tell it what the tables are, what are the columns we join it on. But what is this type thing? So this is new and this is um, what funnel join is contributing here. So a type here is saying we want the first landing and the first after registration. We can look at some different types of funnels. Let's say this we have this user Jim, and this is Jim's behavior on our website with ad clicks and conversions. These are all happening over time. So we see he has a conversion, then an ad click, another conversion, three ad clicks, two conversions. What are the types of questions we might ask about Jim's behavior? We could say, all right, what was Jim's first ad click and his first conversion afterwards? So here we go, we highlight his first ad click and we go and link that to the first conversion. This is the first first after join we just saw. But then we might ask instead, what's his most recent ad click? What's the last one? And then all the conversion afterward. So here we highlight his last ad click, then we link it to the conversion afterward, but we link it to the second one as well. This is the last any join. We take the last ad click and any conversions that happen afterward. Finally, maybe we want as big a funnel as possible so we want to link all the ad clicks and all the conversions that happen afterwards. So here, everything is highlighted except that conversion that happens before any ad clicks, because again, we're defining all conversions must ha happen after the ad click. But here we end up having many links. So, and this is an any any type of join. So what we see here is that we can specify all of these different types of funnels, a first, first, after, a last, any, and any, any, um, because depending on the type of question that we're asking, Funnel join comes with 16 types of funnels that are any combination of first, last, any, and last before, and first, last, any, and first after. So you can combine, you can have a, an any, any, as we saw, a last before first, and so on. Again, to really give you flexibility and easily switch between different funnel types. And to show this a little bit more, I'm actually gonna do a live demo um, based on a blog post I wrote using Stack Overflow data. So let's switch over to that. Uh, can we switch up there? Then maybe. If not, I can see, I can just go this way, I think. There we go, all right. So let's take a look. Here we have, of course, we always start off loading the tidyverse and then funnel join the package. Um, here I'm going to be loading in these answers and questions from Stack Overflow data. So if I go ahead and take a look at this, what this is, I'm just going to uh, zoom in a little more. So these are people, um, all these questions tagged with R, you can download this data from Kaggle. Uh, so we have here the exact type of thing we need. We have an owner user ID, who is the person answering this question, and what was the creation date, when did they answer it? And similarly, we have the questions data set, which has the same type of thing. So one question we might ask is how many people who ask a question later answer one? So how many people actually here have ever answered a Stack Overflow question? All right, we've got a small amount of people. How many folks have asked them? Yeah, a good bit more, right? So uh, not too surprising, more people ask questions than answer them. So, but how do we quantify that? So we're gonna go and take the questions and we're gonna do an after left join with answers because we wanna keep all the question askers. We're gonna find that the user column is owner user ID, the time column is creation date, and now we have the type of join. So in this case, we want how many people, so I need this to be uh, one row per person, so I'm gonna do a first, their first question, and then who answers a question afterwards. So if I go ahead and run this, we'll get a data set of 60,000 rows, which is the number of unique people. 
And we can use another funnel join function, summarize conversions, that will take uh, something that is um, and use that we identify as the column that indicates whether or not there was a conversion and calculate some statistics. Before I do that, I want to use a little trick that um, I actually wasn't familiar with, but you can uh, before making this package, but is present in dplyr. You can add a suffix. So if I don't want these dot x's and dot y's to indicate for columns that are common between the two tables but weren't joined on, which one it came from, I can instead say I want that to be underscore question and underscore answer, just to make it a little cleaner. And now I'm going to say, all right, well, I know that creation date answer is only going to exist if someone answered a question. So let's see. All right, we find that of the 60,000 users in this data set who asked a question tagged with R, 22.7% um, of them later answered one. But let's change it up a little bit. How long did it take those people to answer their first question? So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And now I can, go, I can add the gap call argument and funnel join. So gap call says it's going to create a column called dot gap, which will give you the time difference in seconds between the events. So in this case, we see, of course, we have NA. Some people never answered a question. Someone else answered it in 734 seconds. Someone else many more seconds. So we actually do a quick visualization. I'm going to mutate to get the hours. So I'm going to do dot gap divided by um, 360. And then I can make a quick ggplot. So I can say, let's visualize the hour gap uh, by, and we're going to do a geom histogram. And now we can see this. This, of course, doesn't look very nice. Um, or it does. It looks fine, but it's not super easy to tell what's happening. So actually, I cheated a bit. I pre-wrote a little bit of code just to make the scale better. So I'm going to change it to be a log 10 scale with breaks that make sense um, with the uh, time. And we can see that we have you know, some people answer within an hour, a good chunk answer within a day, some a week, and some wait as long as a month. So if I want to say, I can get an idea from here of like, okay, roughly what percent of those who answered a question um, answered it within, say, a week. But let's say I wanted to answer that right away with funnel join. So I could use, I could take funnel join, and I can add an argument, the max gap argument. So here this is saying, I only want to join questions with answers that have a maximum gap in time of this much. So I'm going to, it can take either an argument as seconds or I'm going to use as diff time. So I'm going to say, uh, let's do seven units equals days uh, and run that. And we're going to do summarize conversion on creation date answer. And summarize. And we'll see that here, before we had about 22.7% ever answer a question, and we see here that 8.8% answer it within a week. So finally, let's uh, switch it up a bit. You know, here we've been looking again always, okay, who asks a question then answer it? But there might be a sort of strange population of users perhaps that answers a question before ever asking one. Do those people exist? And how many of those do we have? So here, if I take the code that I've written, I can now go ahead and switch it over so I have answers going first, then the questions, because I want to know answers before questions, change it to a right join, keep all the questions, and now I change to a first first join, because I want um, people, I want to get their first answer ever, and did that happen before their first ever question? So here, I don't want to just know who and who asked a question after they answered, I, wanted to, I want to know specifically, it must be their first ever question. And then if I use that, I can see that, um, and we use again the creation date, in this case, question, uh, in this case, still answer. And I can see that in this case, there are in fact 4.6% of these users answered a question before they ever asked one. Now let's go back to the um, slideshow here. And I'll wrap, wrap up the talk. So here we have, in conclusion, there are a couple joins of the funnel join, a couple goals of the funnel join package beyond taking you from uh, cinder block being really reluctantly exercising to the cat, cat leaping over the fence. 
And the first goal is to bring the impossible to the possible. Now, I put impossible in quotes, right? Because if funnel join is written in R, these were all things that you could have done, but maybe felt impossible to you. You weren't really sure how to do, answer these types of questions and code it, um, and code it up. But I think more impactful is taking the time consuming and error prone to the quick and easy. Again, if we go back to that first example of switching up the type of funnel, you could start copying and pasting your code and remembering, oh, I have to do descending because I want the last instead of the first and I want to change it to this join, but it really could end up being that uh, you might introduce some bugs that way. But finally, going from having limited creativity to asking and answering new questions. So the biggest benefit I found, and I use funnel join a lot now, uh, is that I'm asking a whole new set of questions that I wouldn't have even thought of before, just because it used to be kind of time consuming and slow and I didn't think of this way. Hadley Wickham's often talked about one of the big goals of the tidyverse is uh, to help you fall into a pit of success, to make it easy and also to let you iterate quickly. That's why ggplot2 is so powerful because it has this grammar of graphics. It's really simple to switch back and forth between different types of graphs which is very important when you're doing an exploratory analysis. And here, that's the same goal we had with funnel join, that by making it so easy to explore these types of funnels, you'll start asking new questions of your data. If you want to learn more, uh, I wrote a blog post on funnel join that used the same Stack Overflow data and asked a few more questions. You can look at that on my blog on hookedondata.org. There also is a vignette uh, on the package down site, robinsones.github.io that you can go to and find. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, it's on GitHub under my GitHub. Uh, and finally, with that, thank you all so much. You can find my blog, as mentioned, on Hooked on Data. I'm also on Twitter. Uh, and I'm actually writing a book, as Jared mentioned, um, on data science careers, which you can find at datasicareer.com. Thank you all so much.